So as of September 2023, 146 Palestinian minors were held in Israeli custody on security grounds, with an estimated 500 to 700 children detained annually. That means around 13,000 Palestinian children have been detained since 2000 alone. Next, we have the abuse of Palestinian minors in detention. Palestinian minors in Israel detention endure physical, emotional, and sexual abuse including beatings, strip searches, and injuries at the point of arrest. Next, we have the systemic prosecution of minors in military courts. Israel is the only country, the only country, that systemically prosecutes minors in military courts, with stone throwing being a common charge carrying a 20-year sentence. Next, we have the amendment to prosecute young children. In 2016, Israel amended a law to charge children under 14 with crimes like attempted murder, a move that has been criticized by millions of human rights group and millions of human beings all over the world. Next, we have the military detention system. Palestinian children in the West Bank are subjected to an Israeli military detention system that denies them basic rights. This system has been in place since 1967 when Israel occupied the, ter the territory following the Six-Day War. Next, we have the systematic prosecution in military courts. Israel is the only country that automatically and systematically prosecutes children in military courts, lacking fundamental fair trial rights and protections. Annually, between 500 and 700 Palestinian children are prosecuted in these courts, and those numbers could even be, and those numbers are on the low end. Next, we have treatment during interrogation. Children often arrive for interrogation bound, blindfolded, frightened, and sleep deprived, and commonly give confessions after verbal abuse, threats, and violence. Israeli military law provides no right to legal counsel during interrogation, and confessions obtained through coercion or torture are seldom, never actually excluded by military court judges. They are always used by military court judges. Next, we have statistics on detained children. So from 2016 to 2022, testimonies of 766 Palestinian children detained by Israeli forces showed that 75% experienced physical violence post-arrest. 97 showed that 75% experienced physical violence post-arrest. 97% were hand-tied. 89% were blindfolded and 80% were strip searched. Additionally, 59% were detained from their homes at night and 25% were, sub were subjected to stress positions. Next, we have detention since 2000. An estimated 13,000 Palestinian children have been detained by Israeli forces from the occupied West Bank and held in the Israeli military detention system since the year 2000. Despite Israelis' ratification of the United Nations Convention on the Right of the Child, which mandates that children's liberty should be a measure of last resort, these detentions continue, often including torture, rape, and cruel treatment. Next, we have the Youth Bill for Child Terrorists. The Israeli parliament passed a law allowing children as young as 12 to be jailed for crimes such as murder, attempted murder, and manslaughter. Next, we have cosmetic reform. So despite international engagement and calls to end the night arrests and ill treatment of Palestinian children in Israel military detention centers, Israeli authorities have largely failed to implement substantive changes, with reforms tending to be cosmetic rather than addressing the underlying issues of physical violence and torture and genocide. Now, I'm not even halfway through the list of war crimes and lists of restrictive laws that Netanyahu and Israel has opposed over the Palestinian people, but I hope this gives you an idea of what we're dealing with and the current state of what is happening to the Palestinian people in the current state of the genocide. I am calling on whoever sees this, whoever watching this, please help us free Palestine. Your voice matters. A simple post, a simple signing of a ceasefire letter, a simple protest at your government, your, wherever you see your politicians out and about because they should not have rest. They are public servants and they have not served the public inception of the government, I'd say. But yeah, we, we can't let this happen and we have to unite. We have to hold politicians accountable. We have to hold APEX and lobbyists 
accountable because that's often why politicians vote the way they do. We have to somehow eradicate these lobbyists that are influencing elections and influencing getting politicians in who support genocide and vote in favor of genocide. There's so much work to be done and I don't want this to be overwhelming to anyone. I just want this to be a wake up call that you can make change no matter whether it's a post, no matter it's going to a protest, a sit in, please do it. Please do not be frightened by their McCarthyism. Please do not be frightened by the fear of losing monetary gain or the systems that capitalism wants us to fear and wants us to tie ourselves to. Please don't, because we are so much bigger, so much bigger than that, and we will win.